Hi, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about reviews. Uh, if you know me at all, you know that I'm an author, and so you probably think that I'm just going to bitch about reviews that I've gotten or complain about people not understanding things, but that's actually kind of not the approach that I want to take. Before I was an author, I was a reader. I, a little bit of background, I have a degree in English Lit, so I basically have a degree in the hobby of reading. So I feel qualified to say things about um, how people read and what maybe you weren't getting when you're a viewer that you should maybe think about a little more. So the first thing I want to say is that, again, with the whole degree in reading thing, I spend a lot of time with academics. A lot of my friends are professors or otherwise involved in, um, I guess, kind of the creation process of books. And there can be a lot of rather, um, diplomatically putting this, there can be a lot of very uppity opinions about books and about writing. And I think that we kind of often go a little too far with kind of forgetting that like your opinion does not necessarily make something fact when you're talking about the realm of art at all. Liking a piece of art, whether it's a film or a song or a book, is very subjective. When you start making this isn't good or this is the best of whatever, I don't think that you're kind of allowing <laughs> for um, the possibility that your word isn't final. And I think that that's something that I'm seeing more and more in reviews from other reviewers because as a reviewer, people often come to you with their books. They want your opinion. They want you to say something. And I think that we get a little bit power hungry with that sometimes and think that like our opinion is the only valid thing. So again, just because you don't like something doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. I wish we would start saying more let's say for example like I don't enjoy Game of Thrones rather than Game of Thrones is bad. Um, I think that those are just very subtle differences that do make a big difference in both how we approach art and how people understand us as they're reading our reviews. Obviously I, I'm i a little hypocritical sometimes because there are things that I read in books that I don't like so much that I'm just like, oh my gosh, here's why everyone shouldn't like this. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a flaw of the book. It might be a flaw with me or my understanding of the book. Um, I do think that there's validity for being constructive in our criticism. Um, uh, anyone can write a book now. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you need any kind of educational background in writing. You can just write something and I think it's a disservice as reviewers to say like, oh this is really really good, I really really loved it, there's nothing wrong with this, you should keep writing exactly as you are. That's not helpful either. That's leaving someone where they are where they're not going to grow and get better in the craft of writing. That doesn't mean that their stories are bad. They might have great ideas but they just don't have the mechanical know-how and I think it is a disservice when you're just saying yes this is great without pointing out those things. I do think you can also be overcritical. There are some books that I've read that I love the story so much, I don't care how many errors they are riddled with grammatically. Um, I think it's worth noting in review that that is a problem, but focus on the strength of the book. If it's something that's so good that other people should still read it, I think that's something that authors need to know too. Of They should be encouraged that you have great ideas, you have great stories, work on <laughs> the aspects that you're not so great at. So one thing as a reviewer that I've seen, I always try to read two or three reviews, if there are two or three reviews, of the books that I'm about to review. And sometimes I will disagree with things that people have said, or I understand where they're coming from, but they aren't getting something that the author is doing. And so I try to kind of cater my reviews a little bit to kind of respond to those reviews without directly calling up the reviewers. The biggest example I see of this is that if there's a book in a series, if it's the first book especially, sometimes reviewers would be like, this was a cliffhanging ending and I don't like those. And if I'd known that there were more books in this series, I wouldn't have read this one in the first place. Okay, first of all, that's not on the author. That's not on the book. That's on you. Most of the time, if there's a book one in a series, somewhere in the description, in the title, on the cover, somewhere it's going to say book one of series or part of 
blank series. If you can't figure out from that that it's a series and then you're angry when it's done to find out that there's more books, that's not anybody's fault but your own. And don't put that in your review that just makes you look like a dick, not necessarily the author. Another thing character related I have seen and I'll be your reviews <laughs> is when you say like, oh, I just don't like any of these characters. This book is bad because I couldn't relate to any of the characters. Like, well, maybe broaden your perspective a little bit and understand these people. There are books, for example, that I know have had um, like gay and lesbian main characters. And I've seen that of like, oh, I can't relate to this. I think I disagree with this and I don't understand the person. Like, well, maybe try to read and understand people who are not like you. That's kind of one of the beauty of stories is that it's supposed to open you to other experiences and other worlds and you can kind of grow and understand other people. So again, I would say that that's something that the author maybe was purposefully trying to do. Okay, you don't like it, but that's not a flaw because the characters, you couldn't relate to them. Another thing you'll see sometimes in reviews is when people say like, oh, I don't like this genre, I just didn't like this book at all. Again, like the cover thing, if you know that you don't like a genre, that's not the book's fault. Like, just don't read that genre. If this book holds true to that genre that you know that you don't like, that's not the book's fault. It's staying true to that audience and you aren't that audience. Along with that, I see reviews where people say like, I only like um, urban fantasy, romance, paranormal, vampire books. You're painting your niche pretty thin there at that point. And then if you're going to go on to say, this book showed me nothing new or interesting, this book didn't do anything that I haven't seen before. Like, well, maybe get outside that genre. Again, if you've read everything in the genre and you're looking for something brand spanking new and it doesn't give it to you, then that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad either, I guess. I mean, I like to see fresh new ideas as much as anyone, but if you're just reading so narrowly, you're gonna see the same things over and over. So maybe try to branch out for a while and see other things. Maybe look at another subgenre of an of a bleh, subgenre of a category that you like, and you'll find some different things there. Maybe you have just kind of exhausted what you're bothering to look at. So the final thing I kind of want to say about being a reviewer is that if you are a reviewer and someone approaches you to read their book and they give you a free copy of their book, and you say that you're going to review their book, review their book. It's just, it's rude. And that's, I think, kind of something that I especially focus on because I'm also an author, so I see this from both sides, but I also think it's just a decent human being thing that if somebody <laughs> approaches you with something and you agree to do something, do it. And if you can't find something good to say, contact them privately and ask if they still want a review. You know, some people just literally need numbers because reviews on Amazon especially, it's all just kind of a numbers game as far as how much we can promote as authors. So if they just need a review for the sake of having another number, even if you guys have nothing good to say, they might just still want that. So at least ask. So yeah, I'm sure there's, I could rant about this for a very long time, but I just, I kind of had those things on my chest for a while and I felt the need to say, so, okay, subscribe, do whatever, leave comments, bye. <laughs>